Hello everyone, my name is Ijezia Nozie Gideon. Um, so basically I'm going to be using this Weibo app to demonstrate how I look at the market and hopefully this can uh, help you guys make better decisions. So now I understand there are several different apps you can use, but this is what I've found to be one of the best in terms of looking at the market. I don't necessarily trade on Weibo. I have traded on Weibo on the, in the past, but I usually I use them mainly for uh, visualization and looking at the market. So um, <clears throat> what you're seeing right now is my watch list, right? And as you can see, I have Coinbase, Google, Apple, Facebook. Those are like key players in the market, right? Um, <laughs> GameStop, of course, I made a lot of money from GameStop back in, you know, in the day uh, when it shut up. Um, <clears throat> but <clears throat> we're focusing right now on um, basically how to use this app, right? So you can click on the markets. Um, in the middle right here, it says trade. And then I have to put my fingerprint and trade. But I'm not trying to trade right now. So I'm just showing you guys all its features. It has a lot of cool features. And some of this stuff, depending on where you are, like if you're in Nigeria, like when I travel down to Nigeria, for instance, it, it disabled a lot of things. Like, you know, it, I guess it downgraded to a different version, right? Because it's not enabled in that location now um let's just jump into into the market and take a look about uh, at how i um, actually look at things so here um i'm looking at the four hour chart so this is bitcoin right so i'm going to explain most of all this right here so these are candlesticks right if you if i zoom in these are all candlesticks and this is a four hour representation right what's happening every four hours right on my video that i posted on youtube i explained candlesticks and what's happening um this is a very large one right here that you can see it was it went down to forty thousand and it came back up to forty five thousand um down here you can see daily we can move this to daily weekly monthly and yearly right so we can see so sometimes you have to look at what's going on in each of them to understand a clear picture of whether i should jump into the market or not so like right now i'm looking at the monthly right and if you look at the monthly at some point right back here in 2017 it was 162 dollars very low that would have been a good time to buy you know right now it's for the six thousand right but we are looking right at the pattern and what's going on here now key thing that you know you guys need to have when you're trading are called moving averages these lines right here you can see this is blue this blue line this blue line there's a purple one here a green one yellow one and orange right these are my moving averages and if you look up here if you look up on the screen right if you look up on the screen you can see them uh indicated right there right the orange one, that's the five-day moving average. The yellow one right next to it, that's the 10-day moving average. Uh, the, the white one is uh, covers everything. Uh, so the white one is saying this is what I have, right? And then the, the purple one right there, that's the 20-day moving average. The green one is the 50-day moving average. The blue one is the 100-day moving average. And the red one is 200-day moving averages. Sometimes it may not show if... It hasn't gotten to 200 days, right? It may not show. It all depends on, you know, the the system. So, so now down here you can see I'm, I have my RSI right, right here. It's very important to understand. Look at what's going on with the RSI, right? Because once it's here, and when it's less than 30, right? Once it goes below 30, that is oversold. That's a good time to enter. Once it goes above 70 right sorry once it goes below 30 that's undersold right once it goes above 70 right here once it goes above 70 then we can say that that is oversold if it goes above this 70 right there's a line here 70. so um a lot of times we want to look at where it has been historically look right here historically when bitcoin was 69,000, it came up to um 90 92 right right now it's at 64 so it's still a good time to come in because of several other factors in the market right so um 
which I would explain, right? So if you look at the weekly, let's go look at the weekly, right? Now look at the RSI, right? The RSI is, is pointing up. It so look, it's technically oversold, right? However, we have to look at the whole dynamics and what's at play, what's going on in the market, right? And look, it went up here when it was at its highest, it went up to 92. So we still have room. We still have room, right? So we're, we're, we're still hanging in there. Now, look at the daily, right? You look at the daily, this is another good one. Look at the RSI here. A couple of days ago, it was 83. It came up to 83 and 88, right? So right now, we are at 62. So it's a good entry point. It's still a very good entry point. So even though it's up here, you want to look at this up here, right, in reference to the RSI, right? Because sometimes you have a very high RSI, but the market, but it's very low. Like, for instance, look at right here. If you look down right here, the RSI here on this date, if you go down here, scroll, come down all the way here, see, right? So the RSI was high up here. The RSI was high up here. However, it was high up here. I think like, however, look, the market was just barely 29,000, right? So if you if you go by this, right, or here, look, this is another one, right here, right here. It was 84, but if you scroll up, it was only 20,000, right? So just because you have a high RSI doesn't necessarily mean that this is as high as it will ever go, right? You have to look at the buying pressure, how much people are coming into the market. Here it was as high as almost 93, but if you look up here, you can see that it was only barely in the 20 something, 20, 20,000, 23,000, right? And it kept on going. So we have to look at the buying pressure, how much people are coming in to the market would suppress this RSI, right? And bring it low, right? So right now the RSI is good for the price, right? So we look at the daily, right? And I like this moving averages because a lot of times one of the reasons why I like this moving averages is you can see it's touching on the moving averages, right? So a lot of times I like to see which one it's following. Is it following the 10-day the moving average? Is it following the 20-day moving average? Because sometimes that's how we know, you know, like look right here, it's following the 5-day moving average. As you can see, the orange stuff going up, right? It touched on it right here, right? And it touched on it down here and actually see that most of the, all the moving averages met here so this is a key point to enter the market what at what point did all the moving averages meet is usually a key point like look here all the moving averages met here as well right if you now look here you see that they all met here it's a good time to enter so now you see that it's following the five day moving average that's the orange one right and it's going up right so we are looking at that we're also looking at the patterns Right, so if you look, if you zoom in here, what do we see here, right? We're seeing a pendant, a bullish pendant, right? So when you get on Google and you type bullish pendant, you see there was some consolidation here. On this day here, which is the ninth, you see how big that candle was. Oh, sorry, this was a week, on this week, because we're looking at the weekly chart, remember? See how bullish this candle was. And then look at the next week, we, we saw some consolidation start going on, still following that five-day moving average. And you can see it's getting smaller, right, on the 30th. And then it kept on getting smaller. And then here, right, it gave us a signal. It gave us a signal. This has a name, right? And it's telling us now that this, this is a bullish pattern, right? And that it's, it's, it has consolidated and next thing we start to go up right so there are several patterns so some people look at patterns some people look at moving averages some people look at this rsi right here now another key one is this right here i haven't spoken about this here this is called the macd right this is called the macd right and a lot of times you know i i like it um because it tells me when it tells me when the market is when it's a good time to um <clears throat> To jump and get notifications okay so um so we're looking at the macd we're looking at the rsi look at the daily macd right so you can see down here right it's just barely opening up on the macd 
right? When it's red, sometimes I even count how many days was red and I start counting from down here on the MACD and I start counting 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and I count how many days and I count how many days is green, like down here and I count these green days. So here, this is the third day of it being green and there was a cross, a little cross that happened here. So that's a bullish sign, right? And then if you look here, if you look at the candlestick here of the daily, this looks like a, a candle about to open. That means at some point, if we're looking at this candle, at some point, right, today, it opened, price opened at 44000 right? And people are like, no, 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 this is too cheap. And they are buying it up. They are, they are negotiating and, you know, they are buying this all up and it's still going up, right? So this is a very bullish sign because we're looking at where it was the day before. Right? The day before it was at 47000 almost 48,000 and right now people are saying no no this this is too cheap they started today and it's going up again so we can look at several patterns like for instance let's see here let's see if we can find a good pattern here A lot of times you see these patterns clear, more clearly when you're on the smaller chart. So this gives you the option of actually clicking and switching over to either 30 minutes or 4 hours. I like to use 4 hours, keep it on 4 hours, but sometimes I go 30 minutes or 5 minutes to see what's even going on. You know, you can go 1 minute to see what's going on every minute, right? So, so let's look at the 30 minutes chart right here. Maybe we'll see something cool. So look right here. This is... A bull flag you see here here it came all the way to uh, 40,000 and then it started forming a flag and it went it went up came down went up and it kept on doing that and then until it came to this point where all the moving averages met you can see all the moving averages met there so that's a, a bullish sign and it kept on flagging out and then it took off right so we're looking at this flag that started from here from here the flag started here right and it kept on going it's a flag if you draw uh, uh, if you draw this out you see that it's a flag here right and it kept on going and it went up so that's a bull, uh, bull flag that's a very common one right um here's here's another one as you can see what's going on here right this is a bullish a bullish pe uh, pendant it came up here it, it Consolidated here where all the moving averages met All the moving averages met here and then it kept on going It consolidated it went up it consolidated it went up it consolidated it went up right so and it kept on doing that So we're looking at how it's moving in relations to the moving averages and We're also looking at sometimes you have to zoom in and look at the candlesticks, right? So I explained candlesticks earlier. It's it's the core you can understand the candlesticks, you know, by um, doing your due diligence and get on YouTube. There's a lot of videos on candlesticks. However, that's it's very important to understand the big picture, right? So, um, so right now, this is the this are this. I'll stop here. This is the main thing I wanted to explain for today.